Can both you and Garrett sustain yourselves from your social media business? Are you a professional dancer? Tips for getting up earlier. How do you center yourself and uplift yourself when you have negative experiences on social media? up you guys welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to be doing a fun little q a i feel like you guys don't really know me you don't really know who i am so i asked all of you to ask me anonymous questions so we're just going to go dive into these anonymous questions and see what you guys want to know about me and i'm really excited to record this video because i feel like it's going to be an opportunity for me to go deeper with you and really connect with you guys on a deeper level. So let's go. I have all these questions, all these questions. So we're just gonna dive in. Going through the experiences you and Shuffolution had on AGT, would you do it again if given the same opportunity? So if you guys don't know, I actually did a whole shuffle performance, formed a professional shuffle team for America's Got Talent. I got scouted. I don't know how I got scouted, but I got scouted by a talent scout from America's Got Talent and we auditioned through videotape and then we got on stages for the live auditions and it was awesome. It was a really cool experience, but also super stressful and I definitely would not do it again. I think through that experience for me personally, I found that I did not love performing. That performing is not a passion of mine. Like I don't like being on stage. I don't like the long rehearsals. I went through a lot of injuries because of that, like with my knee and my foot. And so it was just one of those things where it was very hard on my body and very little payout, you know? So I think the bond that our team, Shuffolution, formed and the friendships, like, is priceless for sure. Like, I love that. Do I need to go through it again? No. And would I do it again? No. Okay, we're going through these questions at random. How long have you been a dancer? So I have been a dancer basically, I mean, I've danced my whole life. I wouldn't say I've been a dancer my whole life, if that makes sense. So I've always loved dance, but it wasn't something that I did professionally or that I got a lot of training out of. That just really started in my late, later adult life. I was an athlete growing up, so I played a lot of volleyball. And growing up, I'll tell I'll tell you guys a story about why I kind of stopped dancing. And then maybe down the road, we can talk about how I got into it. But when I was younger, I loved dancing. And there was one time specifically where I was dancing like no one was watching in my backyard. Like I literally was in my backyard. No one was home. None of my family was home. And I put on, I think, a Mandy Moore song, honestly. And I just like went all out in my backyard and I, I was in elementary school at this point and I went all out in this dance performance like it was just like free flowing freestyling dancing like no one was watching and then at the end of it like I was so happy I was so joyful inside and then at the end of it all the neighborhood kids came through the side gate of my backyard and, and laughter they're all laughing at me they're all making fun of me and it was like a trauma. That memory is seared into my subconscious. Like I have a really big fear of dancing in public, dancing in front of people. I think that's probably why I don't like performing or going inside of dance circles. It, it's just one of those things. And that was like a core wound. And that made me feel very unsafe dancing. And dancing was one thing that I kind of steered away from unless it was socially acceptable like unless you were like at a bar drinking and the dj was playing and everyone was dancing i was not no longer dancing anymore and i took some hip-hop classes here and there and choreography was always something that i felt a little bit more safe in but freestyling was something that i i just have a lot of trauma around because i got made fun of and so that was that was kind of like why I never really pursued it and why I lost a lot of confidence in myself as a dancer. And then that on top of the fact that I'm super competitive and I love sports and I got into volleyball and volleyball, I got into club volleyball. I was on varsity all four years. And if you're playing that competitive volleyball, like you're, you can't really do anything else, you know? So like 
being in dance necessarily like on the dance team wasn't really an option. So that's my story with dance. I recently got into shuffling of almost about three and a half years ago for going on four years ago is when I really got into shuffling lately, like just the last like six, like five, six months, I started getting into hip hop dancing. Are you a professional dancer? So <laughs> piggyback off of that question. I would say, I, no, I'm not a professional dancer. Like I don't have like professional training. I'm definitely not a performer. Dance is an outlet. It's something that I love doing. It's something that I enjoy. It's something that I love connecting my body with the music. I love learning. I love growing. Like I love going to classes. I love pushing myself in that sense. Your worst personality characteristic. <laughs> my worst personality characteristic is my lack of patience for other people. Like I don't have patience when it comes to people that don't have self-awareness and they just don't get things quickly. Like if you're kind of like airheaded and you're, you're not present or like we're having a conversation and you're not, you're not getting it. Or I send you an email and like, you don't even read the email, like stuff like that. I don't know. It's like not necessarily like lack of intelligence. It's more so people that are just like airheaded that aren't there that like don't even put in the work to try and learn. I don't know. I just don't really have patience. Who's your worst enemy? I would say I don't have any actual enemies, like as far as people go, because if there's someone that I don't vibe with or someone that's done me wrong or someone that I don't get along with, like I just, I don't even have the mental or emotional capacity to like think about that person anymore. You know, there's definitely been people that have hurt me in the past or people that I've hurt in the past or, or whatever the case may be. But I, I usually just tend to let that go. Like it's not something that I even hold on to or think about because it's just toxic. It's just toxic energy. Like no one has time for that. Right. There's, there's going to be people that you don't necessarily get along with and that's fine. You guys don't have to be best friends, but as far as my worst enemy, I would say my biggest enemy is myself. For sure. Like I say things to myself that I would never say to anyone. Like sometimes I just say mean things to myself where like you're not good enough or you're not worthy or who you who are you to do this and, and stuff like that that I would never say to anyone else. And so I think it's constantly getting over that that negative self-talk and that like self-sabotaging like thoughts and behaviors that you have. That's what it is for me, anyways. What do you want to accomplish this year? Oh goodness. Okay. So as far as a few things that I want to accomplish, they're like loose goals, but there's a few things that they're centered around. One, this YouTube channel. So this YouTube channel is something that I feel like I don't really know you guys. I don't really, I haven't really cultivated the community where like, you know, we're like a family and that's partly my fault because I've been focusing on other platforms and growing other platforms and managing other platforms. And this one has been not been getting the attention that it deserves because there's so many of you here that are so freaking awesome. So putting out more content on YouTube, I'm also launching a podcast It's called the high vibe podcast. If you can see my high vibe sign, and I'm going to be doing a video segment of the podcast as well. And I'm going to be posting that on here. So you can catch it on Spotify, on iTunes. And if you will want to see the video format, it will be on here on my channel. So I'm going to be posting the high vibe podcast. All of the episodes will go live on here and I'll cut them up into short form videos as well. So getting out weekly podcast content is something that I want to do and really branching outside of shuffling. I know a lot of you have found me through shuffling and I love shuffling. It's something that I definitely, definitely enjoy, but it's such a small portion of who I am. There's so many other things that I want to talk about, like social media and business and entrepreneurship and spirituality and personal growth and my lifestyle, like health, wellness, all of that stuff that I want to talk about that I, I don't, you know, and I, I used to. And so I really want to talk about those things that I'm passionate about that have truly, truly changed my life. And I want to share that with you guys and bring you along the way. So really focusing more on like long form, more intimate content this year, is something that I definitely want to accomplish. And those are really the two main things. I think the last thing that would be like a vanity metric would be like, I think it'd be really cool to get to a million subscribers on here. But to me, having a million subscribers on YouTube means nothing if it doesn't, if it's not a community. So for me, first and foremost, like focusing on like really getting to know you guys and having you get to know me is the most important part. 
So th that's what I want to accomplish this year. How many festivals do you want to visit this year? I really only want to visit, I think maybe like two festivals. So you guys don't know, obviously shuffling is really big in the festival scene. And as someone who used to go to a festival, like I used to, I went to all the festivals since 2010. Is that 13 years? Yeah. So I've been going to festivals for 13 years. And my first one was audio autistic. And in college, I went to every single festival that was in California. And I loved it. It's super fun. I love festivals. I love dancing. I love EDM music. Love it. But as I started to get a little bit older and just a different phase in my life, I would rather if festivals get pricey and they get expensive. And a lot of them, I mean, they're different experiences with different people, but they're all, that's like the same thing. And when you go to so many, you know, like it's not that I don't love festivals. It's that I either want to go to new festivals that I haven't been to and experience them. Like I, I really want to go to Tomorrowland and some other festivals out of state. I also want to spend money on travel and I want to go visit tropical, beautiful locations that I've just always dreamt about. And so it, for me, also festivals are very exhausting because I'm not doing the things that all the kids are doing anymore. You know, I used to do all that stuff, but it was college. I was crazy. You guys, I was crazy in college. I used to do all that stuff. I don't do that anymore. So like, I'm not on the same level. I definitely get exhausted. And it's just one of those things where if I go to a three day festival, I'm out for like, I'm out of commission for like two weeks, you know? So as far as this year, the festivals that I want to go to, I think just some local ones like Hard Summer, since it's in LA, that's something that I would love to go to. If there's any other festivals that I would repeat go to, Lightning in a Bottle is absolutely my favorite festival I think I've ever been to still to this day. And really that's because of like the sustainability portion of it and the people. It's, it's could have changed a lot. It's gotten a lot popular since I went. I went back in like 20... 16. Also, obviously that was a while ago and I know a lot of stuff has probably changed, but it was my favorite festival because of the people there, the, like just the hippie vibe, like the yoga and the sustainability and the e eco-friendly workshops and like sustainable cooking and all of that stuff. And then having like the, the fun party vibes and like everyone is welcome. And I know you get that at other festivals as well. Like EDM, but if you've been a lightning in a ball, you know what I mean? It's like a different vibe, especially when it comes to like cleaning up after yourself and, and taking care of the earth. And that's something that I'm, you know, I care about. So if I do go back to another festival, it would definitely be that one, but I can't go this year. What scares you the most? I think honestly, what scares me the most? What scares me the most is the thought of, or not necessarily thought, like just losing Garrett. I think my, Garrett's my boyfriend. He's also my videographer, my editor, my, like my whole life. That is my biggest fear. Like my biggest fear is losing him because he's my glue. Like he's my life. He's, he's everything. And it's funny. Cause I feel like I always wait for the day where I'm going to get sick of him. <laughs> you know, like where people say like, Oh, you need a break. I need to get away. Like, I never feel like that. Like, he's just my best friend and he's my favorite person to be around. And the thought of living life without him, why am I crying? The thought of living life without him, honestly, is my biggest fear. Um, and I know that's a part of life. Like, death is a part of life, but it is my biggest fear. And it's something that scares me. Like, he's such a night owl and like, he'll go out and I go home early. <laughs> And like, if I wake up and it's like four in the morning and he's not home, like my, the first thing I go to was like, oh my gosh, is he in the hospital or like, does something bad happen to him? Or did he get in a car accident? Like, that's like my biggest fear. So losing him, I wasn't expecting to go there, but we, we just went there. So I also do all the things to try and keep him alive. Like I force green smoothies and green juices and I make him healthy meals despite his best efforts. To just try to eat chips and ice cream. Like I feed him all this healthy food because my, my rule that I tell him is like, you cannot die before me. Tips for getting up earlier. Okay. I have a few tips and take what works with any of these tips. You guys take what works, leave what doesn't. If it doesn't work, doesn't, doesn't matter. We're all different. But what's worked for me is I don't bring my phone into the bedroom anymore. That's just non-negotiable phone no longer comes into the bedroom with me. I noticed that when I was on my phone at night, it was just a ton of stimulation and 
yeah, it messed me up. It just kept me up and I would not get tired. I would not go to bed and I would get stressed out or get anxious or I'd get into comparison or all this stuff. So phone does not go to the bedroom with me. Another thing that I like to do is I've been, instead of like having the TV on or something like that, like I like to bring my Kindle into my bedroom with me. So having that nighttime routine, I think is really, really important and getting to bed at a reasonable time. I know it's like, duh, but easier said than done, right? So having that discipline to go to bed, because sometimes like you want to stay up or you want to watch a movie or whatever, but like having that discipline of, I know I want seven hours of sleep. So like, even though I want to stay up and watch this movie, like I'm not going to be able to wake up early and do the things that I want to get done. Right. So taking my Kindle with me, honestly, reading a book before you go to bed, easiest way to knock out. Like if you have trouble going to bed, read a book. I am literally out within like three pages. And I love the Kindle because I can have all of the lights off and like kind of just like cuddle up and read it and then fall asleep. Whereas like if I have a book, I need the light on. I kind of have to sit up to read the book. So I'm a huge fan of the Kindle. I will link the one that I use below. And then in the morning, I have the, I have this like sun lamp. I think it's called from Amazon. I turned the actual audio of it off because I don't like the audio choices. It's only like four and you just get annoyed of all of them, but the light will just gradually turn on and that makes it really easy. And then I think one of the things that makes it easier getting up in the morning is having something that you like doing, like having a morning routine that makes you happy. And so this is something that you're going to have to play with. Like you're going to have to play with the things that get you excited to get out of bed. It's different for everyone. I have done so many different things like meditate, journal, read, like all of these things. And what currently works for me right now is I like to have my ear pods right next to my bed. And then when my alarm goes off in the living room, I go get my phone and I bring it back in the bedroom and I lay down on top of the covers and I put my AirPods in and I listen to a meditation and one of the meditation, like while I'm lying down. So like while I'm still in this, like kind of like half awake dazed out state, I put on a morning affirmations meditation and it's like a very like upbeat motivational one. It's not like the one where you kind of like hypnosis and fall asleep, but it's like an upbeat morning motivation meditation. And the app that I have that I use that I really like, it's called Superhuman. But there's lots of other meditations that I've done that I vibe with too. So I'll link some of the stuff that I like below because her app does cost money. And I put that on in like 20 minutes. Like halfway through that meditation, I'm like amped up and I'm ready to go. So then I have that in my ear while I'm brushing my teeth and I wash my face and I make my green juice and I take Bon Bon out. Like I have meditations going in my ears and I'm kind of like, as I'm like arising from my slumber, I'm just getting filled with all these positive affirmations and motivation. And it makes me really excited to start my day. So that's what works for me right now to get up out of bed because God, I'm not a morning person. I will be the first one to say it. And like getting up and not hitting the snooze button has always been the hardest thing for me. So that is currently what has been working for me. It constantly, my morning routine constantly changes and evolves as I evolve and as I like new things. So this is something that you're just going to have to play with. Tips for better productivity and organizing your day. I love this question. And I would say I'll be the first one to say that I am not the most organized I, I like to think I'm productive, but like, I feel like I could still get more stuff done as is anyone that works for themselves. You're, you're always going to feel like you can get more stuff done. I don't think that ever goes away. Your to-do list is never ending, but I will share a couple things that have helped me at least manage everything. So a couple things, at least for my scope of work, as far as like content creation, social media, like influencing, I like to separate the masculine and feminine tasks. I found that this has really worked for me. So feminine tasks is like all in my creativity. Like when I'm creating content, when I'm recording my podcast, when I'm recording YouTube videos, like anything where I'm creating and recording stuff, I like to dedicate days to that. And I don't worry about editing. I don't worry about emails. I don't worry about pitching or anything like that. Obviously there are some things where like, I'm going to have to do that no matter what, but I try to not make it a big part of my to-do list. So I have my creative days and those usually tend to be about two, sometimes three days a week max. 
and it changes every week. Like I have to look at my schedule and see what my schedule looks like, what things are coming up. So I don't have dedicated days. I just, every Sunday I sit down, I go, what are the days that I'm going to be shooting content? And those are also the days that I'm going to be doing my makeup because I hate doing my makeup. <laughs> so that's how I like to separate it. And then when I have those creative days, I say, what are my top three things I want to get done? Like whether it's recording a podcast, recording a YouTube video, getting some short form content, whatever it is, like what are the things that I want to get done? And I only give myself three tasks. Anything else is bonus. But I feel like three is always doable. And you're moving the needle forward. You're always moving. If you're getting three things done a day, like three big things that are moving the needle forward, you're doing good. Okay. You're doing good kid. Then on the non feminine, like the masculine days where I'm doing email brand, brand pitches, editing, all of that stuff. I will have my three big goals that I want to get done that today. So I want to edit the YouTube video or I want to edit the podcast or I want to send out 10, you know, brand emails today or whatever. So I'll have those top three. Like what are my top three? And every, usually every night before I go to bed, I decide what my top three are going to be the next day. So I don't even have to think about it. Like when I get in my work mode, I know what my work is going to be. So I figure out what are my top three and I just do that. So every night I kind of softly plan the next day. What are my top three goals? And the way I get to those top three goals is I do monthly goals. So I do monthly goals. Like what are the things I want to get done? You know, I want to post four podcast episodes or four long form videos or five short form videos a week or whatever the case may be. And I kind of set out those goals that I feel like are going to move the needle forward that are in my control. So like, I don't do metrics. Like I want to gain 10,000 subscribers because like that's not in my control, but output is in my control. Like what I can create, what I can put out brands. I can reach out to all of that stuff is in my control. The type of content I can create is in my control. So I set those goals out for the month break them down by week. And then every night I kind of like Sundays are like my weekly planning sessions. And then every night before I go to bed, like before I close out or clock out of my time, I look at my next day, see what I'm doing and then plan my top three. And I just, I just do the top three and that's it. What got you into dancing? How did you begin? I don't know if you've answered this already, but I'm a new follower. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. So I shared my kind of dance story of how I've always loved to dance, but I will talk about how I got into shuffling because I feel like that's more relevant. And that's really what propelled me into this whole thing anyways, is shuffling. So basically back into the festivals, I used to go to festivals all the time with my friends. And when the music was playing, like I would just go off. Like I would go crazy and not even knowing it. Like I would actually form dance circles, like not intentionally. Like I would just start dancing and people would form around me. And I didn't like the attention, but like I almost didn't even know it was there because I was just vibing. So one of my good friends, I knew some of the basic stuff, stuff of shuffling from like the everyday I'm shuffling. Like I knew like the running man, the T-step in the Charleston actually didn't even know what any of those moves were called and I couldn't even teach them if I tried like I it was very hard like it wasn't ingrained in my body but at a festival it just like would come out if you know you know if you've gone to festival like it just comes out and so a couple days in a row like one of my good friends kept on saying like you know that girl that does that thing and I was like no I don't know what you're talking about he's like the girl that does all that the the feet footwork stuff like you need to do that and I was like I have no idea who you're talking about and one day he just like opened up his phone threw Vanessa Seco's Instagram page in front of me from his phone and then like left the room and just I started looking at her page and shout out Van I freaking love you she was like my inspo of why I got started so I went through her page and my first thought was like, oh my gosh, this girl's amazing. I could never dance like that ever. And I literally was just like, she's amazing. I could never dance like that. And then I remember scrolling all the way down and seeing where she started four years before that, like brand new baby shuffler. And I was like, wow, like she's just grown so much. She's put in the work. She was shuffling every single day and getting better. And at that moment in my life, I really had a growth mindset. And I knew that anything that you try the first time, you're going to suck at it. You know, you're going to suck. And if you just keep on showing up and keep on putting in the work, you're going to get better. 
So I decided to do a 30 day shuffle journey just by myself. I was like, I'm going to commit to shuffling 30 days in a row and just documenting it and seeing where this goes and just having fun. And I had so much fun doing that. And I actually have it on my story highlights on my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram and go to the shuffle highlights, you'll see when I started like that day one, I did a whole thing of like why I started and I was documenting journey and somewhere towards the end of those 30 days, Van recently moved to LA and she announced that she was teaching classes in LA and I bought a ticket to go. And I actually, the day of the class, I almost didn't go. Like I almost just chickened out one because it was really far for me. And two, because I was terrified because I've never been to a dance class in LA. I didn't even know what to expect. I was a brand new baby shuffler. I had no business going into this class and I went and I sucked. And it like, I got my ass kicked, but it was like in the best way possible. I felt like I learned so much and that two, well, man teaches for like three hours and that class that I did in the last 30 days. And she started teaching weekly at Team LA TV, the OGs know. And I kept on going every single week and I made friends there and I kept on shuffling and I got better and I got better because I just, I was having fun and I was just doing it every single day, showing up putting in the work, drilling, freestyling, all of that stuff. And, you know, growth is inevitable if you're putting in the time and you're putting in the work. So that was really how I got into shuffling. And then when COVID hit, at this point, I was already posting shuffle videos and documenting it, but I wasn't doing this full time. But COVID hit and that's when like things blew up for me as far as shuffling goes and the rest is history. What's your goal in life? You guys are going deep with the questions. I actually like it. So my goal in life, I mean, I think my overarching goal, the thing that I constantly think about is I want to feel like the end of my life when I leave this earth that I made a positive impact on people that positively impacted people and their lives and their mindsets and their quality of life and our earth and the planet and the animals. And so what... What does that look like as far as execution? I mean, I'm still figuring it out. I'm still learning and I'm still evolving. But at the end of the day, like my biggest mission is to positively impact people. And that's why I really wanted to start this podcast and this YouTube channel and really dive deeper into topics that have truly changed my life. Because I want to share that message and use my story and all of my stories and all the things that I've gone through and hopefully, you know, help you guys through that and like teach the lessons that I've learned. And I still have a lot more lessons to learn. I will say that. But at the end of the day, I just want to positively make an impact on the world and feel like I truly had a purpose and a mission with this short little life that I have on this earth. Is the content creator life financially stable? Would you ever do a course on how to make money as a content creator? I love this question. Okay, let's dive into it. This question actually makes me really, really happy. So as far as is the content creator life financially stable in traditional terms, as in like, are you going to get a paycheck every other Friday like you do for your corporate job? That's going to be the same amount every other Friday. No. I mean, there are some people that have structured their business like that, that sell other online programs or have monthly memberships. And I'm sure it's more stable like that. But if you're just making your money based off brand deals, which was the whole part of my income last year, it's definitely not like that. It's more like in chunks and in lump sums. But last year was our first full year doing this full time with me and my boyfriend. And we crossed well over the six figure mark. When I was doing my taxes, I actually did all the numbers. <laughs> and um, I was really freaking proud of that. Like I was really freaking proud. Now we live in Santa Monica, which is like one of the most expensive places to live on the freaking earth. So like, does that go very far? I mean, no, it's not like we're like rolling in the dough, but <laughs> We will be one day. I know. I like, I have a lot of money beliefs that I'm working through, but it's definitely funded our lifestyle. It's allowed us to both be able to work from home. Garrett didn't have to go back to bartending once COVID like was like over and bars started opening up. Like he didn't have to go back to that. Like we were making more money as a team than he would be in a whole week of working in a shift. So we were like, why would you do that? You know, like, why don't we just like make this a team effort and, and, and do this? So the paychecks, as far as like the lump sums 
go. Like you're, you're getting paychecks with like brand deals and stuff like that, that maybe will last you like two to three months, you know, depending on how you budget and your lifestyle and all that stuff. What I will say is that even if you're working in a corporate job that seems stable, nothing's stable right? Like nothing is actually stable. It feels stable because you're getting that paycheck every other week. But think about it right now. Like there's massive layoffs going on right now in companies with COVID. Like so many people lost their jobs. So many things got shut down. So that stable job that you have is, is it really stable or is it just kind of like a pseudo stable? Like it feels stable, but at any point you could lose your job. And so the way I like to think about it is No, I'm not doing a traditional corporate paycheck or anything like that where I'm getting a like a even kill income, but I'm in full control. All of the work that I put in, everything that I do, it goes directly into my bank account and I get to reap all of the benefits of my hard work. And in times like this, like last year, yes, was really, really good for us. And it was our first full year doing it. And I'm really freaking proud. I'm really grateful. But This year, things have definitely slowed down with the climate and the way that a lot of brands and businesses are retracting in their marketing budget and they're doing massive layoffs, which means there's just not a lot of advertising spend going on in this space. So I could fall into that mindset where I'm like, oh my gosh, like things are going to go downhill and things are going to suck and all this stuff. Or I can pivot and I can evolve and I can look at this challenge and see how can I grow? How can I diversify my income? How can I evolve? And so one of the things that I've actually been wanting to do is create a course around social media and monetizing your social media. And it has honestly been something that has been on my mind for the last six months. I already have the name of my course. I have the name of my course that I want to launch. And I think the things that have been holding me back is the imposter syndrome of like, who are you to teach on this subject and all of this stuff. But this question just makes me realize that there's so much value in this. And this has changed my life. Like social media has changed my life. And I have learned a ton of things from it. I've learned like how to work with brands, how to monetize your social media, how to grow your social media, like all of those things I've learned so much. Like creating content, recording videos, being confident in front of the camera, all of that stuff. And so it's been years that I've been doing like video and content and all of that stuff. And I feel like I have a lot to give, but I think it's one of those things where it's my, I'm my own worst enemy. And I have been scared to even start this program because it's that feeling of like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. And that's like bullshit. I have so much, I know I have so much to share and I know that me just being my own worst enemy is it's not serving me and it's not serving you guys. So I am definitely going to be launching that this year. And so we can add that to what I want to achieve this year is a social media course, like a full on social media course. And it's obviously there's going to be some mindset principles going into it and all of that stuff. But it's something that I'm so passionate about. It's something that's changed my life. And it's something that I've been so drawn to. I'm like, oh, I want to talk about this. I want to share about it. I want to help people. I want to serve people. I want to create more content and make this knowledge more readily available, available for everyone. So I'm going to do it. How happy are you with where you're at right now? I love this question. I think honestly, it just is super dependent on the person. You know, I feel like happiness is a choice that you make every single day. And if I were to look at my life right now from Tori that six years ago, I would be stoked about the life I'm living right now. In this moment right now, it's normal. I've normalized my life. And there's a lot of things that I want to do that I want to create goals. I want to go after income, all of these things that I want to change and improve on. And that's totally fine. But being happy and having gratitude with where I'm at right now is a daily choice that I have to make. And I I truly think that it is a daily choice. And so I am very happy with my life right now. And I still have a lot of goals and things that I want to accomplish and things that I want to strive after. And I think you can have both. I think you can have ambition and goals and still have gratitude and joy for where you're at. Can both you and Garrett sustain yourselves from your social media business? So I kind of answered this question and the answer is yes. I would say, obviously, with the current economic climate, things are different right now. You know, like it's not as abundant as it was last year, but I love the challenge and the pivot. 
And I think that the people that are going to be successful long term and make it long term are the people that are able to adapt, they're able to pivot, they're able to diversify their income. And so that's something that we're working on right now, because all of our money basically was coming from brand deals. And now you're doing a lot more work for a lot less money, which is it's fine. Things change and things evolve. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, like, how can I monetize my platform in other ways? You know, growing a YouTube channel, getting ad revenue. Garrett's now starting streaming and gaming and making money from that. So like we're definitely constantly evolving and growing, but it has funded our lifestyle for the last two years, which I'm super, super grateful for. How do you center yourself and uplift yourself when you have negative experiences on social media? No matter what, when you either have a video that goes viral enough or you have a platform that's big enough can not avoid the trolls the trolls will come the negative people will come people will give their unsolicited negative advice and sometimes it's hurtful and sometimes it's mean and people say really freaking mean things i would say what's worked for me there's a couple things one i love the block button like the block button is my favorite button. I love like anytime someone just says something that's just mean block, just I don't even have the time or the energy to respond or to put any oxygen to that fire. I just block. The second thing is that when a video goes viral enough, I don't read the comments anymore. Just stop. When a video goes out to my initial community, it's generally positive received because it's the people that follow me. It's my community. It's my people. But then once it goes out to the stranger dangers, that's when you get all of the random people that are tend to be mean and negative. And I don't read those comments after a video like hits a million. Like I don't read the comments anymore. Um, it is off into the ethers. So that's something that I do because the, people are just mean and negative. And then the last thing that I will say is that at the end of the day, just knowing who you are and knowing what your intentions are and knowing your own truth, right? Like, and it, obviously it's easier said than done because like words hurt and what people say hurts. But at the end of the day, I think realizing that only hurt people hurt people and anyone that is truly happy and joyful and living a purpose, passion filled life and going after their dreams and they're, they're in the arena and they're grinding away at, at their own goals and their own dreams. They don't have time to leave negative, mean, nasty comments for no reason. Like they just don't. And anyone that's going to be negative and mean, they're just probably unhappy in their current life. And they're, they're, that's just a reflection of them and it's not a reflection of you. And I know, obviously, that's easier to be said than done. But sometimes there's been times where like I've read comments that really got to me or really hurt me or I really wanted to defend myself. And, you know, sometimes I feel sassy and I do a response video and other times I just use the block button and I do things that are going to get my vibe back, are going to help me reclaim my own energy. And so one thing that really works for me is movement. So like going on a run or like going to a boxing class or doing like hot yoga, like anything that just gets me moving and sweating and gets my heart rate up and like listening to good music, dancing it out, like whatever works for you, everyone's a little bit different, but finding that modality that helps you kind of move that negative energy through your body and release it. I think is super, super powerful and important. And for everyone, it's going to be different. So for me, it's movement. For you, it might be journaling. It might be meditating. It might be just going on a walk or, or talking it out with someone. So find, you got to figure it out, right? Like everyone's different, but that's personally what's worked for me. All right, you guys, that is it for this Q&A. We are going to wrap this up because it has been a long one. And I hope that you truly enjoyed this podcast and getting to know me. If you liked this video, if you liked getting to know me, comment below, like, it, share something about yourself. Like, I want to know who you are. I want to know who's listening. Let me know in the comments. Like, let me know who you are. Share a fun fact. Tell me who you are. Introduce yourself in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. I am going to be putting out more long form videos. And I would love for you to not miss them. <laughs>